Welcome everybody to today's BA Insights on the topic of um, the role of the business analyst. Okay, so today uh, we've got a uh, few guests who in, in a moment I'm going to introduce my, uh, themselves to you. But uh, firstly, I'll introduce myself. So, uh, so my name's John Wisner. Um, I'm a business analyst, uh, been involved in business analysis and consultancy for probably longer than I care to remember, but at least 25 years. And, uh, and really what I've been doing over the last... Uh, uh, year or so is really going out to different groups to get their insight on uh, all things business analysis. So, uh, so Sean, Christel and David have kindly joined us today to share their insight as well. So, before I waffle on anymore, uh, Sean, I wonder would you mind introducing yourself, please? Yeah, sure. So, I'm um, Sean Murphy. I've been in the business analysis profession for around 15 years now. Um, currently, a analysis manager uh, within the insurance sector. Um, most of my background has mainly been insurance and banking um, and I try to do as much uh, for the BA community as I, I can, um, attending um, events and helping out with the likes of BCS and IIBA as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Sean. Now, Christelle? Hey, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Christelle Govinder. I'm from South Africa. I've been a business analyst now for, I think I'm entering my ninth year. Um, I'm in the retail sector, but I'm quite new to the sector. My previous experience is in online gambling and insurance. So this has been quite a shake up for me. Um, and I think I've learned a lot about the role of a business analyst as you change sectors, sort of like resetting yourself. Um, yeah, um, active as part of the South African BA community. And if you didn't know, we won chapter of the year last year. So very proud of that title. Um, yeah, I'm involved in mentorship programs and really passionate about this role. That's me. Thank you, Christelle. And, and last but not least, David. Hello, uh, David Strachan. I'm a currently a lead BA um, working in the kind of finance sector. I've previously done over my 25 plus years, uh, utilities, telco, and more finance. Um, I'm current chair of IIBA UK Scotland. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of BA Life, the online BA conference. Um, and I also do mentoring um, of BAs and outside the BA community as well. So, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Dave. All right, thank you all again for your introductions. So what we're going to do uh, first, we're going to talk about generally, uh, really, the role of a business analyst um, uh, as as we see it, really. And I think it will cover many things. I'm sure we won't touch on all of them, that's for sure. But it will definitely be useful to get your insights into what we mean by business analysis and the role itself. So um, perhaps uh, rather than put you on the spot to start first, if I if I give a view of, of some of the things that I, I very, uh, very much believe that BAs do get involved in, do do, then we can make a start from there. So I think um, certainly from my perspective, there's a number of different topics in different, uh, I guess, in no particular order. I think the business analyst is very much getting involved or can get involved for, at the outset of any project, initiative or change to help the business articulate and understand what it is they're trying to achieve. Think about the benefits of that, possibly getting involved as well in the benefits case and helping the business prioritise some of those initiatives that they work on maybe ahead of others and in some case sit at the, the back the, the, to the walls of the back the backlog i think beyond that for those projects that uh, are, are are moving forward or are, are allocated resources or funding then we might go on to understand a little bit more about the situation specifically of the project we'll, we'll no doubt investigate um the, the business process and understand the mechanics of of who's doing what what's being done at the order of things and then importantly what issues or opportunities that there could be around changing that current situation for, for the better, hopefully. Um, I think other things that uh, I would naturally think we, we, we tend to, to, to focus on and talk about are requirements and articulating the need of the business. And then, you know, it, and not as a direct jump, but we'll also talk as well about uh, the solutions as well. And this is more, uh, less from a technical perspective, more from a requirements and functional perspective and try and articulate from the perspective of business what it is they need to see 
in any given solution before we hand over to uh, technologists or vendors to provide us those solutions as they see fit. So I'm sure there's a, a few other things. I'm deliberately trying not to read out everything on my list, but uh, I wonder, um, um, Sean, if, I, if you could ask your opinion really uh, and on uh, the role of business analysts, please. Yeah, sure. And I think you touched on a lot of it there. That articulating um, piece, it applies to all sorts, you know, whether that's articulating what the problem is, trying to translate that into something that more technical colleagues can understand uh, or going the other way and trying to simplify it so that business colleagues can understand um, and essentially using multiple tools to be able to articulate things, whether that be requirements, processes, um, risks, solutions, that, you know, th there's all sorts that a, a BA can get involved in. Um, but I think that, that articulation piece is, is probably one of those key aspects of the role, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. Yeah, very much so. And, and I think, I mean, on that, on that top articulation piece, I think we often find ourselves speaking to a number of different stakeholders that will all see the problem for or the situation or the opportunity from their own perspective or maybe from their own expertise or their own level. And I think trying to give that common understanding to a situation that brings together the different perspectives and as well probably a bit of investigation so that when we share our knowledge of what the situation is, maybe some of those outcomes, that a broad range of stakeholders, be it technologists, business stakeholders or otherwise, can not only appreciate the problem, but can use that as a platform to move on to think about how we solve it. So I think that Sean, that point on articulation is a, is an excellent point, of course, as well as the others. So thank you. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. And I love that nobody's putting it into a box of it's a technological solution. And, you know, often when we say business analysts, we're like, we bridge the gap between IT and the business. Mm -hmm. And the problem may not necessarily require an IT solution. And in order to articulate both the problem and facilitate the finding of a solution, we need to go in without that lens of, I'm going to solve this with a piece of code mm -hmm. or some sort of technology. Um, and that was probably one of the hardest lessons I learned stepping into retail because um, coming from the insurance background and coming from uh, online gambling it was totally driven by technology and software mm. and in retail when you've got end customers that age from 80 to 8 well 8 to 80 rather you know you you can't always have a technological solution like you can't just say oh well we'll get an app and you can shop online because that's not your entire user base so i really love the way you said articulate the problem mm. and Sometimes it could be solved with, you know, process flow. Sometimes it's a requirement. Sometimes it's, you know, being able to articulate that to the different people that you're having that conversation with. Um, the end goal isn't always a requirement or a business requirements document. Yeah. 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 I mean, for me, it, it's picking up on one of the words you used, Christelle. It's we're a facilitator of change. Mm -hmm. Whether that's... Um, providing clarity on, you know, what's the overall scope that we're looking for? Is that need, is that want a real need? Is that something that we have to do? And again, it the answer shouldn't always be technology. And I think as certainly as you look at the way the analyst role changes when you start introducing agile, you do have that kind of shift more into that product space where you're look you're you're trying to work with more closely with the business to help define and identify opportunities and you're using you're using the same, same skill set you're still facilitating those conversations those workshops but you're maybe getting involved earlier and i think as for as long as i've been in it as a ba for me that's one of the more exciting th parts of the role that being involved early in that shaping yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I mean I, I've, had, I've had the role explained to me sometimes as a as a translator, and I think that that's quite a nice way of putting it. Sometimes in that you're trying to collate all this information and and translate what you've heard, and and, and not necessarily um, come up with all the ideas, but more translate the opinions and different views of other people, so that collectively we can come to the right solutions. And it's interesting that uh, you know the points around around technology 
because I've often myself found myself it, been in the situation where you know, might be brought in as a business analyst to help them deliver a protect uh, a client deliver a particular piece of technology when yeah. um it's not always the case that that technology was the right fit and the right technology for the for the client and mm. um I often have to make sure that I'm aware before I push on and look at the technology adoption is it actually satisfying the business need first of all is it delivering the benefit that the client's going to expect um, yeah. and if it is brilliant you know and we'll be more than happy to start decide determining the functionality and the need from that system and helping them but uh, a lot of times actually we find there are gaps and uh, and in the worst cases we find that the solution is completely misaligned to what their business need is so i think going mm. back to i think the point you might make david in that if we get business analysts involved as early as possible yeah. actually then that that helps um and i think to chris Dell's point it it by not assuming that the BA is only going to just come up with a technology solution, but think broader to that, think that perhaps it's a process change that can provide immediate benefit or a, or an adoption mm -hmm. change, or even the way we think about the problem, uh, or indeed the opportunity. And there's all these different uh, opportunities for us to uh, provide benefit to a project. Mm -hmm. And I think, as Christelle mentioned as well, you, you need to kind of step away from that solution mindset early on you need to actually just sit and look at the, pro the problem, challenge, opportunity, depends on which one of the flavour it is, first to understand the landscape to then start peeling it. Yeah. And I think going into yeah, that technology space and a bit of the solutionising part as you move through the process, it's we, we don't necessarily live in a perfect world where every company has the opportunity to build bespoke software that's going to be perfect for that solution you know we, we're in a world now where there's a lot more off-the-shelf solutions software as a service and mm -hmm. i think being a ba it's being aware of the fact that these solutions aren't necessarily going to be 100 percent fit for purpose and therefore what's the impact of that as well mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah absolutely right are we, and it, are it's, we only able to do, sorry go ahead david no on you go thanks so being, a, being able to determine whether it's fit for purpose or not requires us to properly understand the problem, mm. right? And I think, like you said, that's exactly what we do. We jump into that solution mode. Um, I was listening to a few of my BA colleagues likening this to a husband and wife having a conversation. And you know, they always say men go into solution mode and the woman just wants to be heard. And maybe it's not actually a problem. She just wants to talk you through her mm -hmm. system. Doesn't like like BAs just need to be there and like listen to the problem and understand it and be that soundboard to be like okay maybe that's not actually a problem it's a solution I mean it's an opportunity or you know we kind of just need to be a sounding board mm -hmm. for both the business and technology because they tend to be like a married couple that want the same thing but just don't know how to communicate to each other and end up fighting for no yeah. reason. And I think that's I mean it's verging more into a kind of skill set conversation. I think. That softer skill side mm -hmm. is is almost needed more strongly than particular technical bent for BA's personal opinion, um, mm -hmm. because you are involved in those conversations and it's managing, facilitating those conversations and potentially bruised egos in the room when you kind of go, well, maybe it doesn't need to work like that, or well, is that really needed? Um, it. It's that side of it is, I think, where the strongest BAs I've seen, they, they play exceptionally well. I would agree. I, I think I think trying to, to, to be a jack of all trades and, and know all the analysis techniques and engaging with the business yeah. and listening to them, but then on the flip side, being expected to keep ahead of all of the technical, uh, all the technology um, opportunities that are, that are out there is, mm -hmm. is a difficult one. So certainly try not to... Uh, to overstep the mark and try to put my emphasis on understanding yeah. what the business need, what might help them conceptually, what type of functionality or capabilities they need. But then, you know, in collaboration with technology or vendors or other providers, that's when we can worry more about the, mm. the, the technology. And I think sometimes, um, you know, explaining that, not just to other BAs, but to other stakeholders, other clients, other uh, interested parties, um, is 
it is a necessity, but it's also a very valuable exercise to to really take the time up front as you're meeting different stakeholders and as you're engaged on a project to really articulate the things that you would expect to do as a business analyst, the things mm -hmm. that you could do as a business analyst that may be outside their remit, but as well, things that you won't be doing or shouldn't be doing, i.e. you shouldn't be dictating the technology solution. You know, as an yeah. Um, I mean, I think think um, one uh, one scenario as well also uh, occurs to me that, that as a uh, I think it was a topic I was reading about earlier on today. It might have been been about subject matter expertise as well, and mm. uh, and the difference between a business analyst and a subject matter expert. And that uh, I'm certainly of the view that whilst it's not the role of a business analyst to become a, to be the subject matter expert, it's more to corral experts in their chosen fields or on the topic. I think it's invariably the case you do become an expert to some degree for a period of time. But um, I think where the business analyst is the expert on the situation, um, or at least the only expert on the situation, that's not a good state to be in because you're probably making stuff up at that point rather than actually relying on input from the business and real stakeholders. Yeah, and I think it, it's to the space the BA plays in is not typically as the accountable person for making the decisions. You're there to help people make those decisions who are in the right position to do it. Um, but, you know, so many of us, we, we trade on our domain expertise because we can come in, we can hit the ground running in pensions or finance or gambling or, you know, retail, wherever. It's, you, you trade on that because you can shorthand a lot of conversations. Um, but, you know, th th that brings, to, again, another question, you know, the move for BAs as product owners. How does that play to the skill set that we've got? Or um, does that put more of an emphasis on our own decision making capability? Yeah, yes, it, it, yeah I, I completely agree with you, David. And I think what, one of the other things that gives you in some of those conversations is that credibility to be able to challenge and be able to push back on some of those ideas and be able to almost, you know, it's that fun phrase that probably comes out of most BAs of let's take a step back and really think about this because based mm -hmm. off what I know and what you know, is it the right thing to go for? And you can have much yeah. stronger conversations with that yeah. extra bit of knowledge. Yeah. I think it's important to know as well that, that it's not necessarily on the, the well, it's not on the business analyst to decide what are the priorities, what are the solutions, what we should do next, how we should implement. Mm -hmm. But their responsibility is to to put enough information on the table so that everyone ideally can make the right, uh, you know, can inf make the right decisions. And ultimately, the the, yeah. the person or people in charge that will make decisions, they make an informed one based on all mm -hmm. of the relevant facts rather than the uh, uh, blurring of the lines, as it were. Mm. yeah that's for sure um i wonder as well i mean in terms of i think we sort of touched a little bit on on the topic as well but it, it feels like from what you're saying that a business analyst doesn't have to you know they're not expected to be a domain expert they're not expected to be an expert in a particular product or a particular solution but it's more those i think you put them as softer skills david i think that that the ba brings to allow them to effectively be put into any situation and apply a fairly common yeah. set of practices. Is that something you would agree with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the greatest attribute that a BA can have is a, a desire to learn. Because yeah. certainly when you're in large organisations, you won't be on the same thing forever. You will be moved from portfolios or products or projects, programmes. It will change every six months. So your ability to come in and pick up in a roughly familiar area, but a brand new system or a brand new set of stakeholders or a brand new area of the business, you, you've got to have that fungibility. Yeah, that adaptability is key. And again, it doesn't hinge on your technical skills because mm. there, there are teams within the same company that can use totally different tools, mm. have a totally different way of working, again, different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But if you have those softer skills, you're still able to hit the ground running, have those conversations and lean on the credibility that you do pick up 
as the projects pass on and as you change teams and stuff. But, you know, enough about everything to drive those conversations. But you don't necessarily need to be the subject matter expert because yeah. six months from now, if you move back into that team, they've got six months worth of, worth of changes that have taken place that you mm -hmm. are not a part of. So you'll need to, so I, I would say definitely adaptability and that communication skills, not just written, but to be able to have a conversation, which took a lot of strain during COVID and mm. remote working. And now suddenly that everyone's back at the office, you can almost see the mental strain on people's face when they have to sit in a room in a workshop with a whiteboard and three different types of markers and have those conversations. But there comes that adaptability, right? Mm. Who knows, we might go into another lockdown and have to switch back to remote working. We don't know. Mm. So I would say the key thing for a business analyst is that adaptability then closely followed by the communication skills, if not on the same level. level. That's right. Yeah. So there's so many uh, competencies that that, that I guess uh, can, can come to the fore, and they're all really important. I mean, you mentioned adaptability and communication mm -hmm. as well there. Um, I wonder, sorry, Sean, just to bring you into conversation, is there any, anything you might add on top of the, the points both Christelle and David have made? No, I was just going to say that I know we've called them almost softer skills there, but it all encompasses a kind of BA mindset of hmm. you know being able to build relationships and then being inquisitive. You, you've got to want to, as David said, you've got to want to learn. You've got to want to find out information um, because it's, it's only going to make your life easier uh, when it comes to actually doing the day-to-day -day work of a BA. Um, so yeah, I think... I've always tried to explain it more as a, a BA mindset and trying to get across that that want to to do more and to learn um, as part of the role. Yeah, and that extends, I think, to to being the person who's willing to ask difficult questions sometimes. And uh, I think, yeah, some of the things we talk about here is, is not not necessarily understanding or having that pre can knowledge or pre can expertise, mm -hmm. which I think puts us in an excellent position to ask those questions that maybe others might fear to ask in terms of what do you mean by that what's that term why do you need it you know and uh and yeah. be have that inquisitive mindset as, uh, as i think one of you mentioned as well you know and uh, and hopefully as BAs we never lose that because uh, actually asking why and uh, the, the the basic questions often uh you know often leads to the most uh, useful insight anyway i would say Good. Uh, I mean, I think um, it'd be interesting to know as well your, your perspective on on any challenges that you've you might have uh, encountered in either describing the role of the business analyst before or convincing uh, stakeholders of the role of the, the business analyst. Is that as is that a situation that you think you might have found yourself in in the past? I think it's more keeping the BAs to doing the BA work because sometimes they can be viewed as kind of like a project dog's body um picking up just ad hoc random tasks uh if you can focus get the bas involved early and you can clearly articulate the benefits of them as you drill into okay. the scope thing the sizing looking into the first layer of analysis um but it's when they get pulled off onto other non-core activities that it, it starts to become a little blurry and that certainly personal experience that's where I've, I've kind of found more of a challenge yeah yeah I, i'd agree with that and i think the one of the, the traps that you can find yourself in fairly early on especially if you haven't got a very mature practice of bas is they become note takers for requirements rather mm. than challenging and actually analyzing and questioning those requirements it's just a case of i'll speak to that person and i'll write it down as a requirement and mm. Yeah, that's not what we're there to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I found myself telling people the acronym BA doesn't mean be all. I don't do all the stuff in the team that no one else mm. wants to do. You know, the the crappy work, the note taking, the setting up meetings and, you know, like all those little things that, yes, they are important, but that's not what my role is. You know, I'm not mm. measured by the output of a document. I may deliver one document in six months, but that doesn't mean I didn't add value in that six months yeah. to 
facilitating those discussions, understanding the problem. And I feel often, especially when it comes to performance management, where the our performance is determined by output, which is generally a document or some sort of PowerPoint presentation, which kind of impacts how people view the role and how job descriptions are drawn up and, you know, those sort of things. And then you kind of get put into a box where your mindset, that BA mindset becomes output driven in terms of documentation rather than mm. output driven in terms of value. Mm. And I think that, that point of value, Krista, is really important because I think I think you've, you've don't have that awareness that there are loads of valuable things that business analysts bring to the to the table and it's not just that the, some of the tangible things like a document or requirements it's a whole raft of expertise and bringing the right people together getting that collaboration together if in challenging so if we if we don't think about those things from the start it's difficult to appreciate the need for a business analyst on a project and i think sometimes you know by looking at you know, perhaps you know just the outputs it can be easy to assume that well if a ba only their only value is adding a, creating a document or a requirement mm. well let's get someone else in the team to do that and we suddenly don't need them but to the points we've made today there's there's plenty of valuable things that the ba brings as a skill set in exactly the same way that a developer brings very specific skill sets to a to a, a an implementation yeah. as does an architect and as does you know the the other uh, testers as another example okay yeah, to make some points there. I think just just to to uh, as we as we move towards the the, the end of the, the the topic, I wonder is there any um, any final words or words of advice um, in terms of yeah for individuals looking to get into uh, business analysis and maybe what they might choose to focus on first in order to develop at least some of that skill set or mindset of a business analyst to get into the role. Do you, any of you have a, a view on that? Perhaps if I'll start with you, David, if I may. Um, I mean, I've recruited kind of people new to the role. Uh, anything that you can do, look at free events from IIBA, BCS. Um, they run a number of things throughout the UK, certainly. Uh, and IIBA more globally, they run a range of stuff for people can attend. Um if you're in a large organization and there's an opportunity to move into project work, that's a great in. Um, even if you're not as a BA, you will end up working with them and you can see how we work, what makes us tick. Um, and that that's, again, another great way of starting into that landscape. Excellent. Thank you, David. Yeah. Christelle. Uh Exactly what David said, that's exactly what I did, because I started off in testing and I sort of shadowed the business analysts that were on the project. And you learn so much because, yes, it's not a classroom setting, but you're watching them hands on tackling everyday work scenarios. And you learn so much from that mentorship experience of just shadowing a business analyst. And there's lots of content everywhere you look, the IIBA, LinkedIn. Um, in fact, there's enough content for you to pick, choose, and refuse which content you're interested in. So um, I would say for a, for a person looking to transition into this role, reach out to someone in your community, go on to LinkedIn, start signing up for those free webinars, courses, Spotify, go on Spotify, listen to a couple of podcasts. The more you realize that the role is evolving every day, you can join that evolution and be a part of it just by listening to those nuggets that are shared there. Yeah, absolutely sound advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I'd, I think business analysis has become huge. Um, it's no longer the the kind of dark art of how we do things anymore, and there is mm -hmm. content everywhere. Um, reach out to people. You know, LinkedIn is is a great platform. There is thousands of BAs um there's different groups um different communities that you can join try and find a mentor if you can um there's plenty of mentoring schemes as well um and just keep building up that awareness of what a ba does don't worry too much about the toolkit the toolkit can be learned but just mm. try and keep that focus on the the behaviors and the, the mindset and the rest of it should hopefully fall into place yeah I would agree. I think very much. I think broadening people's horizons and looking at as many opportunities they can to to get awareness of 
BA role. And the best best way to do that, as we've all said, is observe others doing the role for sure. I think um, um, certainly my own experience is why we're brought together here is really the, the community is a very open, a very active and a, a really positive community to be part of as well. So definitely for anyone new to BA or interested in business analysis, really reaching out to people in the community, um, I'm sure will be a, a very positive thing to do as well. Um, and I guess my, my, my own advice to, to, to business analysts really is to, you know, make sure that they, in their early days, put as much of their emphasis around listening and making sure they're open to the, receiving information. I think, um, um, you know, a lot of a lot of what I tend to do uh, and a lot of what we sort of articulate here is not about just writing and producing decks or producing output. A lot of it is because we actually listen and we take the time to listen and we take the time to let our stakeholders tell us not just the things that we've asked them, but actually we take a little step back and listen to some of their related problems or some of their other experiences or what their perceptions are on how to improve things. Because quite often, you know, they're at the cold face, they've been doing the job, they will know a lot better than us as to um, how things can be can be improved. Perhaps we just become the voice on their behalf to help them get those improvements. I would say. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for your time. We're going to uh, close the session there, but um, certainly we'll look forward to further BA insights and to the point we've been made here as well, reaching out, uh, listening out for what else is in the wider community. There's plenty of things and the BA community are publishing and providing insight into for anyone of all experiences to learn from. Um, so uh, I'm sure like I do, look forward to seeing, uh, um, hearing from many of you in the future as well uh, and, and other BA insight sessions to come. But uh, for, for the time being, thank you for listening and thank you, Sean, Christelle, David. I really appreciate to have your time and have you involved in the session today. So thank you again.